Hello and welcome, my name is Ursa Ryan and this is another guide in my list to domination victories this time. I hope you've enjoyed my others, I've done one on science, culture and religious victories. This is just going to be another follow on of that. Still working out how to do the diplomatic guide victory because my god diplomatic victories are just the weirdest but it's exactly the same as before what i wanted to do was make a guide on all of the tips and tricks i can give you and a complete game showing you those tricks as to how to get a domination victory and we're using fairly standard rules online speed i genuinely think most people play online speed these days i know standard speed is technically standard but realistically people pick online uh you've got emperor difficulty again i wanted to show it with a level of difficulty that's enough to challenge us but not so difficult that we end up having to change the game drastically to win. We will do a deity guide at some point, I promise. Uh, and we've got a standard continents map. Uh, sorry, I should say a small continents map, which seems to be the default for the game. I saw in this latest update there were loads more map types as well, which is quite interesting. So we might get to do a load of other cool things. But you can see we have been plonked as Rome. We're playing as Rome again because Rome are nice and neutral when it comes to sort of victory types. Now Rome do have legions. Uh, we are going to have a little bit of an advantage in the early game in terms of war because legions are very, very good. But generally speaking, Rome are very neutral in the way they're built. Um, they don't really have any specific, uh, well, they're very strong push towards any victory type over another they can win any victory type and generally speaking whilst the barbs and the extra money and the extra monuments they're they're you know little perks that might push you down a, a more populous sort of taller empire or maybe a wider route i don't know how you want to do it rome can go in any direction and that's why we're playing them now you will see we have spawned in this is literally the first map that i was given if you want to play along i, I realize I, I never put the seeds sort of quite clearly enough but let me go the map seed is in there if you want it i'm sure you can pause it, it's a fairly rubbish start being frank i mean normally with rome if you're lucky you'll have citrus citrus seems to be a really big start they tend to have a lot of deer but you can see we've only got a single deer we've, we've got a bit of rainforest we've got a bit of the regular forest but there's no forested hills do you see there's actually in terms of four tile starts we haven't got a lot uh we seem to have a lot of desert over to the left which is you know not great um we've got some coast over here if you have a look at the river you can see the river is flowing down to the south so i know that there's going to be some coast down south i imagine that's this that flows around uh we're going to have at least one person on the continent with us and uh, domination victories are funny old things they, they they kind of put you in the middle of the game you need to play well in pretty much every way actually look you can see the coast there right okay wow yeah look literally the coast is sort of along here so this is a very thin island actually very very thin um we, we need to kind of push ourselves into the middle so step one what where do we settle what's our turn one play here now when i've done these games before the first thing you need to look at is four yield tiles the more four yield tiles you can get in the immediate area the better and you can see here we only have a single one it's 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 not great, put it that way. Uh, this start has only got one. I, normally, if I was playing by myself, I would probably restart this, but we're not going to. I'm gonna show you that you can win regardless of your start. Um, I mean, it's all right. We've got at least one mountain over here. If I put a campus on one of these two tiles, maybe put the government plaza down, we could get a decent looking campus. There's a nice river, but unfortunately the river's got no wheat or rice on it. So the water mill's gonna be pretty much useless. The housing will be all right, but bro, there's always, very good at housing anyway so uh, we've got a couple of things we could be getting rid of i mean production is going to be a bit of an issue we've got a one hill one hill i can see and a lot of these other things like this mercury is not going to give us much in the way of production this stone isn't either i would be tempted to get rid of that stone if it wasn't for the fact that we can't really sync up fields in this area it, it is a very weird start we're gonna have to I think have one of these games where the capital maybe isn't the most important building. Uh, either that, or we're going to have a situation where we need a really, really good industrial zone. Um, but anyway, do I move my early game settler now? It's only going to be along these rivers. If I move to here, uh, I, I actually lose the adjacency to that four yield tile, so that's, that's not that's not great. Um, I don't really know what's down here. I've got a warrior. I can have a look round. I could push him towards the desert, but the desert's not. I mean, that's 
not going to be very helpful really is it I, I, I really want to be pushing along this river to see if there's anywhere to settle I could go and have a look down here now now this is the alternative if I follow this river to the left I'm looking for more mountains right more mountains get me science if I build more campuses but this is all desert it's not very useful I need floodplain desert it's possible if I head down this way it looks like this is forested it looks like we may have better better things down in this direction so I'm going to move my warrior we're going to move you to here you can see look okay there's more there's more rainforest that's not great but does moving my settler actually make a difference I could go and push it towards uh, the desert actually settle it one across which would mean I've got more adjacency to the mountains but I'd, I that would be putting more desert tiles I don't mind a few desert tiles it's a really good place to stick districts but I mean I actually think this is going to be a good starting location so let's put Rome down that'll be fine now what is the strategy what are we trying to do with a domination victory well quite simply we need to kill everybody but it's more specific than that I want to take everybody's capital and that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be at war with everybody all the time and it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to kill absolutely every city of everybody there's a few limiting features we've got to keep an eye on here such as things like amenities amenities are going to be a big problem for us if with war weariness and if we have like 25 cities our luxuries are just not going to cut it as well so we've got to keep an eye on luxuries we're not going to have the happiest game military victories are never the happiest games but we've got to keep an eye on that useful cities are the ones we want to keep we're going to think about raising cities and we're going to think about keeping capitals this is all something to consider but what text do we want to go down what focuses do we want now campuses are really important on any domination victory realistically i want a campus in every single one of my cities and there's a reason for that primarily because every single military unit in the game is in the science tree if you're not in the sciences you're not going to win and equally if the domination victory is not proving very successful a science victory is the easiest way to go after that i want to put a campus in every single one of my cities <sighs> encampments you might think are super important realistically not as important as you might think i realistically only need three i i need an encampment in my best cities they are really really useful i want things like military academies i want things like barracks uh, or armories or stables all of these things but it is all going to be incredibly useful for me and, and, and I, I want all those buildings if, if i'm building an army a cavalry army for instance and i haven't got a stable an armory and a military academy then all of those units are not going to be leveling up as quickly as they can and they're not going to be built as quickly as they could be so encampments are definitely important but putting an encampment in a city that's maybe only four or five population strong that's not going to do me much realistically encampments are going to be in the sort of two or three biggest cities of mine more important are commercial hubs gold is super important if i don't have gold i can't fund my army that gold per turn drain just by having a standing army is ridiculous so i need commercial hubs everywhere or harbors harbors works as well you know i can still have a trade routes trade routes put road down uh, roads down harbors let me grow they all give me gold uh, realistically i want uh, either a commercial hub or a harbor in every single one of my cities so campuses commercial hubs and harbors these are the most important if i've got a commercial hub i don't want to build a harbor and vice versa there's no point on stacking up obviously i would recommend building an aqueduct in every city you can they're very very good the housing is fantastic rome is even better because it gives you extra housing and extra immunities it keeps me nice and happy and those stack up nicely with industrial zones now industrial zones are really important because these things give crazy absolutely crazy production bonuses when put next to aqueducts and then eventually when you go down to coal power plants um, we don't mind flooding the world with co2 because we're destroying it it's quite that simple apart from that other districts are i've sort of I, I don't want to neglect other districts but they're not as important um, the government plaza isn't as important as, as some games uh, realistically uh, I want to be getting it because things like the audience chamber would be quite a good one um, ancestral hall is always quite good I may even consider this time getting the warlord's throne uh, the warlord's throne of course giving me 20% production every time I take a city that's actually a very good thing theater squares you want some like don't neglect your culture because 
you know, there are very important cultural things here. Civics that give uh, extra combat ability, such as uh, national identity. Nationalism, which lets you create corps. Uh, going down later, mobilization, letting you create armies. There are really big things here. Fascism later in the game, I, I want I want that combat strength. There's a huge, huge incentive to going down the Civic Street, but it's not as important as you might think. Um, other districts are aren't not very really important, really. I'm not going to go for a faith at all in this game. I will get a Pantheon because it's always worth getting a Pantheon, but there's no point wasting a slot on a holy site for now. Canals, canals are very situational, um, and we've got spaceports, again, very situational. But, and here's the thing. How are we going to go about this? Domination victories can be a little bit technical in the sense that you don't want to just go to war with everybody at once. If you go to war with everyone, you can be continuously at war and you'll fall behind in terms of tech. Now, on this continent, I'm going to be sharing this continent with at least one other person. On this particular map type, especially while I've got Legion in the early stages of the game, it's well worth going after whoever's on this island once the Legions pop up because they're going to be very, very powerful. But after that point, I don't want to rush into war. The later I leave it, the more powerful my units are. And the better my science, the more I've, I've pushed along. And actually, ah, military victories work in a very specific pecking order, right? And later in the game, you unlock the better types of military. You want to be thinking along the lines of this. Nuclear weapons and uranium are tier one. If you have the most nukes, you will win any war. It is that simple. Nuclear weapons, especially thermonuclear devices and giant death robots, death robots later in the game, all of these things are ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Just, yeah, nuclear war. The reason it's so good is that uh, any bomb, a nuclear device or a thermonuclear device, it will one-shot a city. It will bring the walls down to zero, it will bring the health down to zero, and you can simply take a helicopter or a tank or something like that and rush it in. They are fantastic. But, of course, uranium only appears later in the game. The next stage, tier two, are air units. If you don't have nuclear units, whoever has the most air units will win the game. The reason is that these bomber units and fighters and jet fighters and biplanes are ridiculously strong. If you have a look at this, uh, infantry units are 70 strength. Biplanes are 80 strength. Already biplanes are super powerful and that 80 strength, that can hit um, cities as well. Like they are they're crazy, crazy powerful. If we go a little bit further along, so you've got fighters, 100 strength. Bombers, 110 bombard strength. It's madness. It's really good. Let's put that into context. Uh, where is my tank? Uh, a tank is only 80. A bomber will take out a tank in one, one hit, pretty much. Air units will win you the game. Whoever has the most air units will win. Before that point, of course, it's Navy, tier three, Navy. Navy is the most important thing to have after air units. Whoever has the biggest Navy will win. You can have the biggest land army you want, but if you control the seas, your land army is not going to leave. It is important that we have at least two or three harbors and that we are producing units somewhere. And lastly, the least. Land units are the least useful. Obviously you need land units. If you don't have them, you will not be able to take anything, but they are not as important as naval units and naval units are not as important as air units. Air units are not as important as nuclear devices. There is a pecking order here. We've got to keep an eye on that through the game. Now, obviously I'm not going to be able to build planes or nuclear devices right now, but I want to keep it in mind. Now, early game priorities for any domination victory is to get campuses up and running as quickly as we can. But you always you want to think about things like animal husbandry, mining, irrigation, masonry, wheel, all depending on sailing, I guess, all depending on what units and, and resources you've been given. Now, I have at least two animal husbandry sites within a tile of my city. You've got deer, you've got cattle. I want to improve those both nice and quickly. I've also got mercury, which is a luxury resource. So realistically, I want to be going animal husbandry and then mining after that point. Hold shift and not control, you moron. 
Ah, oh, there we go. Right, so that's fine. Now, I would ordinarily build a monument first because culture, you know, going from one culture per turn to three culture per turn is a huge deal. You know, nine turns for Code of Laws, well, by, by rushing that in, I'm going to be getting uh, God King pretty quickly to get the Pantheon nice and quickly. I can do things like pushing through to get myself Oligarchy, to get myself that plus four combat strength as quickly as possible, and then so I can build the war... Uh, what's it called? The Warlord's Throne. I want to push through here as quickly as I can. These, these early game things are a policy, so are really, really powerful. So monuments are always a good move. I would always recommend. But Rome starts with a monument. So you have a look at this. What else do I need? Can I improve anything in the next five turns? Well, I could build a builder in five turns. So yes, I'm going to build a builder. I'm going to get myself animal husbandry. And once that's done, he can be improving the cattle and the deer mining will finish and you can go over and prove the mercury done easy easy done after that point what i'll do is i'll get a scout uh, or two just to sort of scout round and i will rush an immediate early game settler because i want to settle out this capital is not very good i want to push through this as quickly as i can we're just going to come off turn one here look at that oh only about 20 minutes talking about turn one this time that's not too bad uh, let's keep following the river. I always like to follow the river. The rivers are always great places to settle. It's always going to give you a huge, huge bonus to exploration if you just follow the rivers. These are the, these are just going to be the best places. Oh look, already I've got that uh, that thing. Oh, what are we what are we working by the way? I hope it's the deer. Yeah, sometimes you need to watch these early game tires, but those deer. That's what I know. Oh oh oh, tribal village, and bananas. That's a good thing. So already we're looking down here. But we've got a great place to settle oh uh, settlers here we go oh do you know what this means as well i can't settle on that banana tower that means there's a city state over there or i'm really really unlucky and i've started right next to a computer I, i'm hoping i haven't done that uh code of laws i'm gonna quickly get discipline up because uh, i haven't got any scouts yet and i'm gonna get god king if i get god king i can get that early game pantheon nice and quickly so here we go I've got a builder unit. <laughs> okay, right, that changes things because I'm too, t <laughs> it's annoying, I'm two uh, turns already into improving that builder. Now, if I've got one, two, three tiles that I can upgrade, is it worth finishing this builder? Or shall I use this production on something else? I think I might switch to a scout quickly and I'll scout this way uh, along this river and see if I can find anything that way. I think that's probably the best thing to do gone to this deer yeah i don't think there's anything it's not there's no point in rushing i mean i could start chopping down rainforests and things but that's going to take bronze working no uh and all oh, brussels there we go brussels this is the thing and i found it first which means i now have plus two production when building buildings and districts that's quite good that means i can build a campus up nice and quickly oh already it's all coming together now i'm going to rush through the government plaza i quite like this one I want to get that built so I've got a campus. The campus is either going to go in one of these two sites and after that point I can build the, the government plaza after that. So, so far so good. 